The Oxygen Analyzer Project is a collaborative effort between senior design students in the Biomedical Engineering and Material Science and Engineering departments. Together, these students work under the mentorship of EWH. Hi, my name is Arlene Doria, and I am currently the president of Engineering World Health at UCI. EWH is an organization that mobilizes the UCI community to uh, do projects to help uh, healthcare in vulnerable communities of the developing world. 50% of medical equipment that is in developing world oftentimes does not work and even about 70% of donated medical equipment doesn't work either. And so I mentored this project, the Oxygen Analyzer, and they are constructing a device using zinc air batteries such that they could check that oxygen concentrators on incubators will work. They have partner clinics um, in Africa, Central America, and what they do is they interview, um, very systematically inter interview a bunch of these clinics, and they find out what are the needs. My name is Dan Bukhari, and I'm currently a senior at UC Irvine in the Biomedical Engineering Program, and I'm working towards a specialization in biophotonics. Hi, I'm Ricardo Chua. I'm a fourth year biomedical engineering major. I have a biophotonic specialization. Hi, I'm Gary Hill. Uh, my major is Mechanical Engineering and Material Science Engineering, double major. Hi, my name is Jonah Jackson. I am a fourth year triple major in Biomedical Engineering, Material Science Engineering, and Anthropology. Hello, my name is Chaya Koo, or call me Jim. I'm senior year in Biomedical Engineering. Um, my specialization is biophotonics. My name is Christopher Jong. I'm currently a fifth year student at UC Irvine, majoring in Biomedical Engineering and with a specialization in biophotonics. Our initial evaluation of possible available solutions pointed us to pulse oximetry, galvanic cell oxygen analyzers, and porphyrin-based oxygen analyzers. We later deemed that pulse oximetry did not exactly address the issue we were concerned with, so we ruled it out in favor of evaluating the open flame test as a solution. This is last year's design, which is a porphyrin-based oxygen analyzer. The principle behind this is that this porphyrin gets excited by a green light, and as it returns to its ground state, it emits a certain amount of red photons depending on how much oxygen it gets reacted with. The problem with this design is that it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get a reading, and also the porphyrin is relatively expensive. One current method used in Africa is called the open flame test, where they take a sample of oxygen from the oxygen concentrator and put it in a bottle. They then take a candle and put it in that bottle and then light it. They take that entire apparatus and put it over a shallow pail of water and as the candle consumes the oxygen in the space, the water level will rise. They can then take the initial and final levels of water and use that to gauge the concentration of oxygen. Galvanic oxygen sensors essentially work by a chemical reaction within the galvanic fuel cell, the cathode and the anode. And uh, that's because of the exposure of the potassium hydroxide to the air. Uh, the current created is dependent on the partial pressure oxygen uh, produced, and we can measure that oxygen uh, based on the current. Um, this particular model is uh, $400, and it has a response time of 15 seconds, um, and it's accurate within 90% of the actual uh, uh, oxygen um, in the atmosphere, or uh, in its environment. This cost is a major factor as an engineering world health project and zinc air batteries only cost about a dollar each. This design relies on the reaction between the zinc air battery and the oxygen from the air. So depending on how much oxygen reacts with the zinc air battery will determine how much current is generated by the battery. Our prototype will measure the voltage and current generated by the battery at different oxygen concentration settings. Three current solutions were compared against our solution using a P matrix. After our initial research, the team developed a list of five criteria that factor into the design of a successful product. We decided that driving down costs was a primary improving factor that we could target, followed by equal shares of accuracy, ease of use, and reading time. The last is the ease of maintenance. The results put the zinc air battery design at the top, followed by the porphyrin-based analyzer, galvanic oxygen analyzer, and lastly the open flame test. Through initial brainstorming meetings and feedback from our mentor and class advisors, we were given approval that the concept of our proposed solution was feasible in application. 
once this was decided, we were able to create a conceptual design by the fall quarter. One of the biggest decisions in our design process was choosing to use an Arduino microcontroller as our primary control method. A system flowchart was created to outline our initial design's process flow. Air from an oxygen concentrator would make contact with a zinc air battery, causing a change in the voltage. The voltage would be detected by the Arduino microprocessor, and it would be programmed to have a different response based on that measured voltage as it relates to a concentration of oxygen. This initial design used green, blue, and red LED light indicators to show oxygen concentrations at 90% or greater, 60% or greater, and below 60% for each of the lights respectively. These lights can be seen on the side of our first SOLIDWORKS design. The case tried to conform as closely to the size specifications of the Arduino, leaving just a bit of vertical room for additional wiring and circuitry. There is also a separate chamber where the zinc air battery would reside, and this is the chamber from which air would flow in and out. It was important to keep the design as compact as possible, not only for portability and storage issues, but also to keep the air chamber small for faster gas purging. From this initial conceptualization, a project design budget was generated. This incorporated the projected cost of the prototype, casing, and testing apparatus. One major point of critique in this initial design was the use of RapidTech for casing. This was initially chosen for ease of manufacturing in the custom parts in the design as well as the desirable properties of the ABS-like material being relatively inert. However, this hardly justified the fact that the casing would end up costing several times more than all the other parts of the project combined. Before fault prototyping could begin, some basic tests had to be conducted to prove what could be done with the zinc air battery. The first set of tests were conducted simply with wire, resistor, a DMM, and a zinc air battery. The idea was to find some sort of response in the voltage when the oxygen available to the battery became limited. It was also important to note the voltage drop over time as current was drawn with the batteries. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances and some mistakes in circuitry, these experiments ended up not actually proving anything, meaning further experiments had to be conducted. Additional investigation was done to develop a circuit that would more closely emulate what the project was trying to do. Furthermore, the testing methodology was improved by the inclusion of a DAC and a LabVIEW program into the process. It records voltage over time. We can set the total amount of time to record for in seconds, but we can also set a, a kind of catch for if the voltage drops to zero for a certain amount of time, which is this timer, then it will stop. So we can just run this program and save to a file, and then it records data. Currently what the circuit is doing is we have our battery, which is our, our uh, sensor, and that's providing uh, a voltage. And then what we want to do is apply a resistance to the battery that's variable. So we have our MOSFETs or transistors, they're all transistors, hooked to different resistances. And then using the Arduino, we can intelligently switch the resistances uh, across the battery and measure um, the, the voltage across the battery and it will be a function of oxygen. So basically that's how the whole system works right now. The LEDs can be used by the Arduino to output various things. With a new testing apparatus, the team was able to run the test over an extended period of time for better data. We did not have any way to feed specific concentration of oxygen to our sensor yet at this point. What the test did prove is that the zinc air battery voltage definitely responded to changes in the oxygen concentration as we varied it through the oxygen and nitrogen inlets. But these are different uh, oxygen concentrations. Mm -hmm. You can see it drops between each one. They're just random. They're not really like specific con concentrations. But down here is um, room room air. Okay. At a certain thing, and then as you raise the oxygen concentration, you get uh, more voltage. This is basically max with oxygen under load, and then if you bring it down to like. Um, no oxygen, or just air actually. It's not no oxygen, but air. It mm -hmm. goes down to here, and then you unload it. This is unloaded, so Whoa. this is like full voltage yeah. of the battery. But you can kind of see that um, there's step differences for oxygen concentration changes. I wanted to look at the response of these, because these all look like exponential decays. So I went through and captured each of those, and then did uh, fitting curves to each of them. It's actually fit to two different exponentials, a slow exponential and a fast exponential. And usually it's dominated by the fast exponential. Almost all of these had similar tau values, C tau 12.3, the last okay, one was around 12. 12. That's okay. good. Um, they pretty much all came out the same yeah. no matter where you were going from and to. These are all different conditions. So these were different, like going from different concentrations to different concentrations. Mm -hmm. They're okay. all within 12 seconds. Yeah. Like well That's within good. 12 seconds. Okay. So basically our reading times, 
Very good. With a viable proof of concept, it came time for actual prototyping. The circuit was further improved, then finalized onto a solder board. The new circuit called for 9 LED light indicators, each representing a difference of 10% oxygen concentration, which is much improved over the previous design's three indicators. Another major point of improvement was the inclusion of a galvanic cell oxygen analyzer into the testing schematic to be able to gauge and measure specific concentrations of oxygen. To calibrate it, we're going to have basically a setting where you calibrate and you get two points. You get 100% oxygen and another point could be any point. So with those two points, it can extrapolate the rest of the uh, uh, concentration curve, so make predictions about what the concentration will be. Measure the oxygen concentration accurately compared to a control, which is a store-purchased oxygen sensor. And this is ours, which is made up of an Arduino and a custom circuit. We're measuring the voltage across that with a MIDAC and a voltmeter just to make sure. And the battery is inside here. And this is our flow chamber. Is This one lets in oxygen. This one lets in either air, nitrogen, or argon. The exhaust comes out and goes to the store-bought uh, oxygen sensor. We can individually control each of those supplies. For this test, the line was purged with just air so that the oxygen concentration was at around 20.8%. Then, the 100% pure oxygen was flowed in. In our analyzer, each LED represents 10% concentration with the first red LED being 20% and the highest green LED being 100%. Our analyzer responded very quickly but is only reading the 100% concentration faster than the control analyzer because it is the first in line of the oxygen. Regardless, the response and accuracy was usually very good with readings generally coming out within 10% of what the control analyzer measured after it reached steady state. We also wanted to see the effects of humidity on our device. We tested at normal air humidity, low humidity with the use of desiccants, and high humidity by saturating the air with water. These tests showed that humidity did indeed have an effect on our sensor's readings. We also checked the effect of extended use on battery life. The battery's voltage reading dropped over time, experiencing a noticeable dip by 12 hours and a huge dip beyond 20 hours of continuous use. With the circuit board finalized, we were able to finalize the casing design as well. We decided against rapid prototyping and opted to just modify a commercially available project box. We also removed the previous air chamber and replaced it with an external handle that housed the sensor, allowing for a smaller box and easier use since the entire box no longer had to be attached to the oxygen source. This brings our final estimated prototype cost to just over $60. Mass production would only help lower this cost since all of our parts were purchased at retail price. Although we were able to get encouraging results, there is still much room for improvement as far as accurately and consistently predicting and defining the oxygen concentration readings. Additional testing would also be ideal to fully characterize the behavior of our device. Beyond being an EWH project, market studies estimate the medical oxygen systems market to be worth $1.8 billion by 2017, showing potential for commercialization. Oxygen concentrators and other respiratory devices also account for approximately 25% of the oxygen therapy market. However, the device would have to pass through FDA approval first, as regulated by the Center for Devices and Radiological Health. We would need to fill out a 510k form and prove that our device is novel and low risk before undergoing a 60-day review period. Aside from gaining valuable technical skills and knowledge, we collectively agreed that leadership, organization, and accountability are among the most integral qualities we had to apply and improve upon throughout for the duration of the project. Keeping each other and their work up to date and having clear-cut goals were essential in seeing the project through to its completion.